reduce calories and exercise more. That's all you need to do to lose weight. Haven't we heard that a thousand times before? We all know it and if you're here, it's because that hasn't worked for you long term. So today I'm going to share with you some things that I do on a daily basis to lose weight and keep it off. Stay to the end for a couple of fun bonus tips, but let's just kick off with number one. The first thing that we should all be thinking about all the time is water. Good old H2O is your best friend. Drinking water throughout the day not only helps boost your metabolism, but also helps hydrate your skin. Studies also show that drinking cold water can help increase your metabolism because it takes quite a bit of energy to turn cold water into warm water for your body to digest. Now, whilst a litre of ice water will probably only burn about 35 to 40 calories, if you had two litres a day, that could be about 90 calories. So over a year, that could easily equate to around four to five kilos of fat that you don't put on and can just give you that little bit of an extra boost each week. And obviously, Water is fabulous for your skin if you're worried about breakouts and keep your skin looking young and hydrated. So you need to be looking at having a glass of water at least half an hour before your meals. This will naturally help you reduce the amount of calories that you eat in a meal. If you're not a big fan on drinking plain water, make up some ice cubes in the fridge with, with lemon juice or lime juice or try drinking green tea. Another option is to take a couple of capsules of psyllium husk before your meals, which is a natural fiber which will help to fill you up, absorb fats from your blood and help lower your cholesterol. The next big tip that you need to think about is snacking. Snacking is a bad thing, I know we all do it. However, you need to consider these scary statistics. Something simple as a bottle of soda, a standard packet of potato chips or a chocolate bar contain around 300 calories. Now, if you were consuming one extra snack above your meals every single day, that adds up to a whopping 110,000 extra calories per year. That means by cutting out one 300 calorie snack a day, you could potentially be saving your body from gaining 35 pounds of fat. That is huge and you wonder why the weight creeps up when you snack. If you do have a problem with snacking in between meals, the big things to do is to drink water, have a cup of green tea, have a handful of nuts, a piece of fruit or even a couple of mouthfuls of Greek yogurt. This will help tide you over to your next meal. But every time you think about snacking, think about the math. That really keeps me in check. Number three is dealing with those sugar cravings, which particularly come around 3 p.m. and after dinner. If you are someone who does have high sugar cravings, I could suggest trying something like a supplement called berberine. I have some videos on that on my channel if you'd like to check it out. A lot of people, including myself, have had success with this supplement with sugar cravings. Other options are to try a sugar-free gum, or if you absolutely must have something, maybe two to three squares of dark chocolate and suck on them. No chewing, suck on them until they are gone. But the big thing to remember with snacking late at night is it tends to sit in your stomach and the chances of it turning to pure fat because you're not moving is much higher. So it is better to just cut those snacks out after dinner. Another way to not want a snack after dinner is to make sure that you have a filling high protein meal at dinner time. This will help you feel fuller for longer. Another big tip is a distraction. As soon as you feel like you need to eat, first of all, have a drink of water or make yourself a cup of tea. Then go find something to do. Check your emails, hang the washing out, go and put on some face cream, put on some hand cream, go for a walk, go weed the garden, just get away from food. And most of the time, you will forget that you're hungry. Another big thing is to stop thinking that you're on a diet. As soon as we mentally think we're on a diet, all of a sudden we are thinking about food 24 hours a day. What you need to be thinking about is nourishing your body. You are not feeding it, you are fueling it. 
Whenever we eat junk food or high processed foods, it is like putting a piece of paper in a fire. It burns so fast and then we're hungry again. You need to learn that investing in you is the best thing that you can ever do. Only you can make things better for you. And a lot of these come from another thing being habits. Around 43% of what we do every day is via habit. So you need to change your habits. Do you always have popcorn with Netflix? Do you always have an ice cream at the movies? Change your habits. While you're waiting for your kettle to boil, do push-ups on the bench. Do a lap around the coffee table. Just change your habits. So every time you actually feel like having something to eat, stop and go and grab some hand cream and pop it on and make that a new habit. Put a little red spot on your computer and every time you see that red spot, suck your abs in. These things are habits and they will form over time, changing your life dramatically. A lot of what we do and don't do is about our mindset. We need to change our mindset to one of wanting to invest in our health and our body. Another tip is to make sure that you slow down your eating and to use smaller plates or smaller utensils. If you tend to eat rice with a big spoon, eat it with a small spoon. And make sure that you stop and chew each piece of food. It takes about 20 minutes for your brain to understand that you are full. So if you are scoffing your food down in five minutes, you are just gonna keep eating and you are gonna eat more than you need. So slow it down. Take some sips of water between each mouthful and try to get that food down to 15 to 20 minutes. Another thing is, don't always rely on the scales. I have a video about that. It doesn't always tell you the truth. We have water retention, we put on muscle, our body weight can fluctuate. You need to measure yourself, keep it in a journal, and check that once a fortnight. That will help you keep motivated. Your clothes are your best indicator of whether you are being successful. Now, these last couple of tips are just kind of like bonus tips for a bit of fun. If you are finding that you don't trust yourself when it comes to eating, try opening an Instagram account or take a photo of your meal and sending it to your mom or your best friend. Now this is going to make you start thinking, oh my god, I'm going to get caught, I'm going to shrink the sizes, I'm going to be healthy because I want to show off that I'm doing the right thing. Sometimes just knowing that you need to take a photo and be accountable to other people can help keep you on track. Another thing to do is just make sure you do try to get out and exercise. I am a big one on walking every day. It has become a big thing in my life, like a lot of people since COVID. I got myself a Fitbit that shouts at me if I don't get moving, and that is very motivating. I also do push-ups on the bench when I'm waiting for stuff in the kitchen. I do leg circles when I'm lying on the couch watching TV at night. I'm always trying to think, you know, I don't want to stand here, I'm going to move. Do arm circles, just move all of the time. I am totally about balance. I like to have a good life. I like my pizza and I like my wine, but I also get out and about and walk. Hopefully some of these tips that have changed my life will help to change your life. Just remember, you are the greatest project you will ever work on. Restart, reset, refocus as many times as you need. Just don't ever give up. Good luck out there with your weight loss and healthy lifestyle journey. I hope to see you soon.